Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the Hemisphere S320 top enclosure. And the reason we like to replace these top enclosures is the power button starts to go. This is the most common issue on the S320, and it's quite frankly, it's an easy fix if you have the parts. So before I begin here, what I'm going to show you is this other top enclosure that we had sent in by a customer where they actually soldered on a new button onto the unit. It's pretty. It's a pretty impressive little job. They did damage the front panel there. I don't think this radio light works anymore, but the power button did work. And honestly, that's the most important thing for these. As long as you can turn them on, you can more than likely still work with them. So what I'm gonna do to begin here is I'm just gonna move my new top enclosure off to the side here, and I'm gonna bring in my other unit. And to begin taking the top enclosure off, what we gotta do is we gotta take off these five screws here. So I like to use just a flathead screwdriver to remove these guys and loosen it, and then I can just undo it with my hand. So I'm just gonna pop that off, and then I'm gonna loosen it from my antenna port here. And just before I get opening this thing up, I will let you guys know I am grounded before doing this. You are working with computer boards, so it's not a bad idea to get grounded. Um, but what I'm going to do now to begin to actually open up my receiver is I'm going to use a Torx 15 security screw bit and a drill. And I'm just going to set this to a reasonably high torque of seven using my DeWalt drill here. And I'm just, I'll put up on screen a picture of the drill bit you actually need to undo these. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and loosen all of these up. So let me do that. Okay, so I've got all five of my screws out here. There's the five around the edge. And now to actually open the receiver up, what I like to use is again my flathead screwdriver. And right beneath the power panel, there's a notch actually that you can insert some sort of lever in. So I'm gonna use this flathead screwdriver and I'm just gonna pop it in and you can see it separates from the bottom here. And I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna crack it gently along every side here. And then once it's good enough, I can actually pop this off and lay it out. So you're going to want to be careful removing this quickly as this ribbon cable is actually attached to the receiver internals. It doesn't matter if you break it on this end if you're replacing this, but obviously if you want to keep this and reuse it and keep your receiver in good shape, you're going to want to be careful popping this off. Just make sure you gently put it off and take it down. There's enough slack in the cord that you can just set it on the table like this. And now what we got to do is we got to remove the antenna of the receiver. So there's four just Phillips screws here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen those up now. And while I'm doing this, I'll just let you guys know. So the S320 is fifth generation RTK and we're now on our seventh generation. So it's still a good unit if you're doing, you know, open sky stuff and nothing too challenging on the canopy side, but it is starting to get quite dated. So if you're looking to upgrade this unit, you're looking to trade it in, uh, we still offer trading credits on the Hemisphere S320. Uh, just drop us a line on our um, on our website there, or you can give us a call at our toll-free number, both of which can be found in the description of this video. So now that I've loosened all four uh, screws from my antenna here, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to lift the antenna up, and this one doesn't have as much slack as my top enclosure part here, but it does have enough that I can hold it out of the way here. And this is a bit awkward for me as I'm doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take my ribbon cable out. And the ribbon cable is just held in by this connector here. And to loosen it, all you need to do is move these two tabs on either side. You just need to pop them up. So again, my handy dandy little flathead screwdriver. What I like to do is I like to put it under the corner there and then just gently push up and it lifts it up um, easily. Unfortunately, I'm right-handed, not left-handed, as I'm trying to do this in video, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty. And I'm just trying to keep this so you can see it, so I'm gonna do it on the other side here, just pop it up, and then that ribbon cable slides right out. So this top enclosure is now removed from my receiver. But now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to attach the new one. So what I like to do is I like to line up my ribbon cable so it is directly across from my ribbon cable connector here. And what I do is I take this cable here and you can see on the cable, I'll see if I can hold this up here, I'll just place the antenna down. You can see on the cable that there is a shiny side with some exposed contacts and then the other side of the ribbon cable is covered in that uh, plastic, uh, plastic resin there. So what I wanna do is I wanna ensure that these contacts here 
are actually facing into the receiver. So there's the high plastic part that that tab that we just lifted up. I want my resin on the ribbon cable touching that with the contacts facing inwards towards this main panel here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that slide that in here and unfortunately again I am a right-handed person and using my left hand is always a bit of a difficulty but once I get it in there it'll sit in there nicely and what you can do to tighten it is just use that flathead screwdriver again or a pair of tweezers to push down on the cable and it securely pinches it in place. So that is now set in place. So what we're going to do now is actually just reassemble the receivers. So the antenna, we got to place back on where it was sitting before. And the easiest way I like to tell what holes we're doing that, you can obviously mark them with um, a piece of tape or something like that, but it's quite easy to see which of these holes has the um, has marks where you can see where a screw's been tightened. So I always like to start with this, this, uh, this screw hole here, as it is the largest one and it gives me a bit of play for tightening the others. So I'm just gonna take my screw that I took out earlier and I'm going to replace it into those holes. So let me quickly do that for you now. Okay, so I've got all four of my screws. The antenna's um, secured onto the post now. So now, kind of, in my opinion, the most difficult part of this repair, and that is actually properly getting this seated on the bottom enclosure. So the way I like to do it is we have the battery doors as kind of a reference on where things need to go. And then using this back post back here to set into the back one on this one. So what I like to do is I tend to start with laying the lip of the lid on in front of my battery doors there, kind of lining it up in the middle, and then slowly bringing it back down, making sure I don't pinch that ribbon cable in the closing up of this lid. And then I just kind of, you know, set this in the front here, and then I slowly press this down, and then I can make any last second adjustments to make sure that those posts are guided on correctly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tighten up these screws. So let me just quickly do that. All right, so I've got all five of those screws back in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test and make sure that the receiver, we actually properly put this back on the top enclosure. The way I like to do that is I like to take a battery, stick it in the battery port, and then gently press it in and hold the power button. And if you hear a beep, it'll power up just fine like it is now. So this has been done correctly. It's now ready to go out for a new customer. Um, and that is how I can quickly and easily replace the top enclosure on an S320 to make sure I have a working power button. And just before I do my outro here, I would just please ask if you guys have a moment, if you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really does help us out quite a bit and it helps me keep making these videos for you guys. So if you wanna see more of this content, please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you have any questions about upgrading from the Hemisphere S320 or the Carlson BRX5 to the Hemisphere S631, please give us a call at 1-888-286-3204 or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca.